ask you this, Red. Who is Lyman Spitzer? Give me no his details. Give me his background. Clue. Oh yeah, there you go. Like you, like I said, I know more than you. That's why, obviously, you de you demonstrate you're ignorant on a lot of subjects here, and I'm pointing that out. Lyman Spitzer, a skull okay. and bones Freemason. He's the one behind the whole concept of, of the Hubble telescope. I'm surprised, Red, who okay. claims to know so much, didn't know this. It's so important to understand the foundation of these agencies, Jack Parsons, occultists and Satanists behind NASA, and, and all these people, you know, former a Nazi, of course, Werner von Braun, you know, head of rocketry in NASA. We have to understand the foundation. He doesn't know the foundation of NASA. That's what it comes up to. Now, getting back to Lyman Spitzer, he's the one behind the, uh, the whole concept of the Hubble telescope. He was a skull and bones Freemason. Get the name, the planet of okay. Lyman, and, and and again, he was he was appointed at Princeton at the age of thirty three years old. Who is Lyman Spitzer? Give me no his details. Give me his background. Clue. Right, I don't know who Lyman Spitzer Spritzer well, is, okay. and he's one of my people. I have no idea who he is. You a direct question. Who is Lyman Spitzer? Give me no his details. Give me his background. Clue. Right, I don't know who Lyman Spitzer Spritzer well, is, okay. and he's one of my people. I have no idea who he is. Right, I don't know who Lyman Spitzer Spritzer well, is, okay. and he's one of my people. I have no idea who he is. Lyman became the focal point for putting telescopes in space. Anybody that studies astronomy and astrophysics has to think of Lyman as a great uh, pioneer, but also one who laid the foundations, uh, solid foundations for, for future work. He made epical contributions in plasma physics, in stellar dynamics, in space physics and the interstellar medium and how stars form. I think it's fair to say that if any one person um, created the field of thought of interstellar astrophysics, it was Lyman Spitzer. Right. I don't know who Lyman Spitzer Spritzer well, is, okay. and he's one of my people. I have no idea who he is. It's an acceptable answer. Right. I don't know who Lyman Spitzer Spritzer well, is, okay. and he's one of my people. I have no idea who he is. He was a visionary. Uh, he was a scientific leader. He was the one that in the 40s, 1940s, before anybody could ever imagine putting a telescope in space, he immediately started thinking and he said, well, there are rockets, we can go above the Earth's atmosphere. Why don't we build some mission, put a telescope up above the Earth's atmosphere? So he, he wrote this uh, paper for the RAND Corporation. It was an, an unusual proposition that he was making. If you can get away from the atmosphere, whether, which makes the stars twinkle, which is very pretty and all romantic and all that, if you could get above that and get a telescope up there, you could learn a good deal. People thought he was crazy. It just sounded like science fiction. Through your career and your writing and your acting, you've inspired so many people to enter the sciences. How do you balance science with science fiction? They're both the same. The, the mystery of science fiction is what I'm talking about. Science and science fiction are essentially the same. Thank you very much. How do, how do you prove a black hole? How do you know those gravitational waves proved the collision of two black holes? Somehow, eventually, they are able to observe phenomena. No, they that... can't observe. <laughs> it's too far away. It's too theoretical. How do we know what they're saying is true? It, you know what it really is? It's all science fiction. About <laughs> science and science fiction are essentially the same. Thank you very much. I was talking with a gentleman from Belcom, and, and we were discussing uh, 
the lie. Everything he was telling me was different from what we were being told uh, was the truth. And at one point I asked him, I said, man, you guys, you, you lied about a lot, didn't you? And instantly he said, no, we didn't lie about certain things. We lied about everything. I really don't think people realize how deep the lie goes. You look like you're in a studio, maybe in Omaha, Nebraska or something. The, the, the shot is so clear. Is this a hoax? Are you really in space still? See the hair? See the hair? See the hair? Ground control to Major Tom. Ground control to Major Tom. It's just my job five days a week. A rocket man. A rocket man. I can hear machinery blinding me with science. It's poetry in motion. Can you hear me, Major Tom? Can you? You were both in Skull and Bone, the secret society. It's so secret we can't talk about it. What does that mean for America? The conspiracy theorists are going to go on. I'm sure they are. I don't know. I haven't seen the website. Number 322? <laughs> uh, first of all, he's not the nominee. And, uh, but, uh, look, I look for... Are you prepared to lose? No, I'm not going to lose. You both were members of Skull and Bones, a secret society at Yale. What does that tell us? Uh, not much, because it's a secret. <laughs> Is there a secret handshake? Is there a secret code? I wish there were something secret I could manifest. 322, a secret number? Uh, there are all kinds of secrets, Tim. You were both in Skull and Bones, the secret society. It's so secret we can't talk about it. What does that mean for America?